Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a brief look at the new release of Ubuntu 2104. If you are new to Linux around here, then maybe you're seeing some people say positive things and some people say negative things about Ubuntu. The fact of the matter is more people come to Linux from Ubuntu than most other Linux distributions. However, there is some, some back and forth. Some people in the Linux community really like Ubuntu. Some people in the Linux community really don't like Ubuntu. We're not going to get into all of the reasons there, but in the event you're new, just as a brief nutshell, Ubuntu wants to support as many systems as conceivably possible, and this means that it has a lot of proprietary software. That means software that is closed source, nobody can audit the code, Additionally, they seem to work with companies that some people come to Linux to avoid, like Microsoft and a few other companies that are not quite as privacy minded as many people in the Linux community would like to be. On the other hand, so, so in other words, because of that stance, some of the community really loves Ubuntu because it's really moving very functional systems into Linux and doing it in such an easy way that a person can pick up Ubuntu and generally feel very comfortable and a lot of stuff's going to work and you're not going to have to fighting around with the terminal and fixing your system. On the other hand, though, a lot of people come to the Linux community to avoid the interactions with these companies and their closed source software. This is why Ubuntu is controversial. You either love it or you hate it. There's not a whole lot middle down the road. I and probably a middle down the road guy. I don't completely hate it. I'm not a huge fan of it either. I don't like a lot of the directions that they go, but nevertheless, it is a very significant distribution. And because of that, we do want to go ahead and uh, give a little bit of homage to the distribution when it comes out with a new version. So with that, we are going to go ahead and have a brief look at the release notes. Now, the biggest, most significant thing under the hood for this, as far as the enterprise users, is the best native integration with Microsoft Active Directory. Now, this allows an IT department, for example, to administer a whole series of machines under a single group policy. This is an excellent thing, and it definitely gives more people the experience working on Ubuntu because it's a lot easier to maintain by the IT departments. So for that, that is really good. They also have, um, it's now um, certified with Microsoft SQL servers, and so for the enterprise customers, this is one of the best distributions. What does it have for the basic users? Well, the basic users, the biggest thing we're going to see out of the box on this guy is it is moving towards Wayland as the default. This is really on the goal for the next LTS, which is going to be the Ubuntu 2204 edition. And so they're integrating Wayland by default now. This will help them resolve and work out all of the bugs that they can get out of it while not being a, an LTS based system. They have fixed a lot of the bugs that we had with it. OBS is now working with it. Firefox now working it with it. Flutter applications are now working with it. So there's a lot more things work with Wayland than did a few years ago when they first had their failed attempt at leading with Wayland. If the Wayland is still a problem with you, you can log out and log in under X as well. So you do have that, but Wayland is considered more secure. And so let's go ahead and give this guy a shot. The other thing that we are going to see with uh, with Ubuntu is we're going to see on the installation, you have the option of the EXT or you have ZFS. So you have a couple different file managers to choose from or, or um, file, uh, file systems to choose from as you are installing your system. So that is actually good and that it, it is starting to move towards towards this. You can encrypt it on on. Um, um, on Lux, so that is certainly something you can do as well. And then they changed the the dark theme with the new icons. It actually looks really good. It certainly is, in my opinion, one of the best looking Ubuntu's that has come out for quite a long time. With that, let's go ahead and have a look at the desktop. So the first thing, uh, just kind of logging in over here and having a look, we are on GNOME version 3.38.5. Now, GNOME uh, 40 is out, but uh, it's not utilizing that. That is quite a radical change. A lot of the extensions, a lot of things that Ubuntu has done to work with GNOME 
will be changed and broken on that. So we're not going to see that coming out quite yet. We do have the Linux 5.11. I don't see the kernel listed here, but it is um, it is uh, 5.11 on the kernel. Let's just go ahead and type in our terminal here and go into, if I can type correctly. So we have 5.11 is our kernel. I'm not sure if HTOP is installed. Nope, it is not installed. Let's just go ahead and pull up a generic system monitor. We should hopefully have one of those in there. Just see what uh, what the usage happens to be. So we're running on about a gig of memory. So uh, a little bit heavier than you would than you would like. But Ubuntu, it's kind of like Windows. It just starts running on more and more and more RAM. So hey, that happens to be the thing. Overall, you're not going to see a lot different. Uh, as I said, the theming, I really like this theming. The, they did such an excellent job on getting this thing looking really well. The icon pack is nice. It matches your, your default colorations. It's not too bright. It's not too dark. And uh, it, does, it, it has quite a bit of an appeal on it. In addition to all of your basic upgraded software packages, pretty much whatever is is the the latest upgradable packages we can possibly get, we have. The downside, one of the other downsides of Ubuntu is it does still seem to prioritize snaps among other things. Snaps are once again something you either love or hate. And I know some people say, hey, you say that in passing in a lot of videos. Why not talk about why? Well, I have had a several videos, but let me go ahead and once again, as we talked about um, at the uh, at the beginning of the video, why was Ubuntu controversial? Well, snaps are a little bit controversial because while the applications themselves are open source, the only way to distribute them is a proprietary backend. Some people don't like that. And additionally, they will do things like they update themselves automatically. That might be something you want to do. You might want to say, uh, no, don't do that. Mm. You have a little bit of choice, but not nearly as much. On the positive side, snaps, they, they are very good and universal across most Linux distributions. As long as your Linux distribution has system D, then snaps are going to work. So that is the, the good sign. And several snaps are built by the actual companies. And that means that they're very cross-platform with even a lot of different Linux distributions. So that is really your positive side. On your negative side, there are also a lot of snaps in the snap store that are not authorized, not official, and some of them even seem very shady. Shady. There was malware detected in one of them at one point in time, and this shifted them to say, hey, we're not going to audit the code anymore. We're just going to trust the developer. I want the code audited. I don't want to trust the developer. That's exactly what the Snapcraft website said uh, after a vulnerability was found. But uh, if you go ahead and search for something, I always do a search for Caden Live because there is a repository, a snap, and a Flatpak version. Now, Ubuntu does not run Flatpaks out of the box. You can install it. It's not really any issue. So what I did is I just clicked on the first one, and you can see here that the source here is coming from the repository. And we're going, going to be, this is for, let's see, okay, so ignore the first number. So it's 20.12 is this version of Caden Live. Your snap, so this is your snap crash version. This is uh, uh, 2012 3. So, and if you pick the snap version, you can go with the snap, 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 and these will tell you which version it happens to be. So this is version 16, uh, 2012.3, 2012.3, latest stable, latest stable. This is a beta version. And um, what is this one? Latest and edge. So this would be like... Um, uh, like a nightly type build. So you do have the option which one you want to go with. That's one of the positives of it is you can set that to control some of those. But uh, nevertheless, when you go ahead and install things, it does tend to show you snaps before it tends to show you repository uh, items. You either, again, with snap is like Ubuntu, you either love it or you hate it. Um, I tend to prioritize not using them. I will if I have to, but you know, that's my own personal preference. 
Everything else under the hood is going to be very similar. If you're new to Linux, we have the Office applications installed by default. This is LibreOffice. Now you can select a minimal installation, which will not install your Office applications and some of your extra files like games, Office applications will not be installed. I selected the full version, which is going to contain those. It's just which one would you like to do? Ubuntu does have a live patch option, which I believe does require an Ubuntu login. This is something that will, um, so here you need a key. It's not available for this release. So what this is going to do is it's going to patch security um, updates while you're working. Basically, it, it very quietly goes through and adds some, some updates. I do like the fact that that is disabled by default. Again, not something I like, but there are people that need that, that want that, and that should have that on. So you can enable it if it's available for your release. This one's probably not just because it's it's so new, just came out. And then I believe that you will need a Ubuntu account to do that as well. As far as everything else under the under the hood here, it's going to be the same as uh, as your other versions of Ubuntu, just updated packages, a few more little tweaks to make things work. So overall, this pa this release does look pretty good. So far, it seems to be fairly stable. I did have one little snafu on it. I did have one little application crash that was kind of an under the hood thing. Um, that's not too ex out of the ordinary expect uh, unexpected on this old virtual machine that I'm using. But for the most part, this does work very well. So is this something you want to give a try out to? I would definitely say give it a try. Now, if you are running an Ubuntu LTS, so that's going to be an even number 04. You may not want to upgrade to this one if you need that LTS. This is part of their, their nine month rolling. This will be uh, surpassed by the um, uh, 2110 later and then again by the 2204. But if you are into rolling your software or you're looking for a new distribution to give a try out, definitely have a look at it. Now, if you do not like the basic GNOME version, you can actually go with their flavors. They have a variety of different official flavors, Kubuntu, Lubuntu, Ubuntu Budgie. Ubuntu Studio is an XFCE based with a lot of applications for uh, multimedia production. We have Mate, we have the Kylan, which is the Chinese version, and then we have Zubuntu as well. So you do have a lot of different options if you're not into the GNOME version. I would definitely say give it a try. Ubuntu always does a good job. You either love it or hate it based on its individual philosophy, and I will leave that to the viewer to make your own determination on that. I'm not going to say it's either good or bad. It's just, it's a very good distribution. The question is, does it match with your personal philosophy or not? So there we have it. There is a brief, brief look at the new version of Ubuntu. It is now available for download as well as all of the flavors are available for download. So go and check them out. Have yourselves a, uh, a good time with that. And uh, with that, I will uh, leave you with this one here. Thanks for watching. And uh, you can, of course, support the channel over on the website, switchlinks.com forward slash support. We have Subscribestar and Patreon. We have some affiliate links as well from Amazon and a few other ones. Those are all on the website at switchtolinux.com. With that, we will leave it here. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.